Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks. And in this video, we'll be looking at one of the most overlooked elements of sound design. We'll be looking at envelopes. So this isn't a basic tutorial on what an envelope is. Rather, it's a cheat sheet for common envelope shapes for common preset types. So we're going to look at envelope shapes for things like leads, plucks, keys, and pads. So by the end of this video, you should know how to take, quickly take a pad preset and turn it into a pluck just by changing the envelope shape. Or you could take a pad and quickly turn it into a lead. So I'm going to be using Serum in this video. You don't have to use Serum or you don't have to be a Serum user to follow along. It's just an incredibly visual synth. So that's why I'm using it. So that being said, let's cut the intro short, dive into our DAW and get started. All right, so like I mentioned in the intro, I will be using Serum in this video. Now, if you don't have Serum, you can still follow along in pretty much any synth that gives you a graphic or a visual envelope. Now, just make sure that the synth you are using, if it's not Serum, has the same type of envelope. So Serum isn't just a standard attack, decay, sustain, release. We also have the hold right here. So if you don't have the same type of envelope, they'll look different. All right, so first thing, let's go and initialize our preset here. And this shape that you get in the initialized preset of Serum is pretty standard for most synths, and it's a usable envelope. Now, you're not going to be able to use this on every type of sound, but it's great for saw chords and polyphonic synth chords where you need a very short attack and a very short release, but you need a good amount of sustain. So this is the default sound in most synths in terms of the envelope. Right? Nothing special, nothing crazy, but it does work for certain sounds. All right, so here's an example of an actual preset that we've made. It's from our pack, Blackout Future Bass. It's a chord sound for, for Future Bass drops, basically, and it sounds like this. And the envelope for envelope one, which is the amp envelope for Serum, and that means that's the envelope that is routed to the output of the synth, it literally is the default shape, right? So you can use the default shape for certain sounds. Now, let's say you were using this sound and you needed to change it to something that wasn't as forward with both the attack and the release. This is something I mentioned in the video is that being able to get presets to fit your tracks efficiently and quickly usually is just a matter of tweaking envelopes. So I could take the attack up for this, curve it a little. All right, so here is another example where you might want to use what would be most likely the default envelope shape in most synths. So this one is using the default envelope shape in Serum, but the preset sounds like this. So there's a lot of movement going on, and that's being achieved with this LFO that's modulating seven different sources. Now, the reason why I said this envelope works for this type of sound is because if you have an envelope with too much attack or too long of an attack time, you're actually going to miss out potentially depending on how you've set the LFO. But with this example, I would. I'm going to miss out on this first, basically the first rise of my LFO shape. So I'll do that right now. Turn up the attack. Right, it we lose some of that energy. Now, on the flip side of that, having too much release would be bad, especially when you have a gated or rhythmic element that's making the sound move like this one. You can hear that when a chord change occurs, we hear that last chord because of the release, right? So just showing you this to highlight that that default envelope shape does have use in sound design. All right, so this next shape that you see is a great starting point for key sounds. Anything that has a quick strike and then needs a little bit of natural decay into its release stage. So this will work well for mallets and for bells that might be a little bit longer. And I'll, and I'll touch on those actually next in the video. But for keys, you usually have a fairly, I don't know, medium length decay, right? If we shorten this decay too much, it's going to sound a little bit weird. Now you can change the slope of the decay to fit the needs of your song, your mix, or maybe you're playing fast, maybe you're playing slow. And I'll touch on that in a couple minutes, but let's just listen to this standard uh, key shape that I use all the time for keys. So here is a preset from our pack Vivid, sounds like this. So if I crank up the, the sustain more, It 
it still fits that key into that key world a little bit, but it starts to sound more synthetic in my opinion. So if you're going for a more organic sounding key preset or sound, make sure the sustain isn't that high. So basically it's like a elongated pluck, which we'll get to a little bit later in the video. So if you're having trouble getting a key sound to fit into your mixer track, here's one thing I would tweak with the envelopes. I'd first go and check out the release. This is usually dependent on what you're playing, how fast you're playing it, how many notes are in what you're playing, and your tempo. So for instance, let's say I was playing something kind of fast like this. I usually wouldn't want a super long release time because it starts to sound muddy, right? That there's a buildup of notes that's going to result in mud in my mix. And I may not know why it's muddy. I might try to EQ it, but it's usually because too many notes are accumulating. So I might shorten the release to fit what I'm playing. Right, and I'm purposely playing really fast just to highlight this example. The next thing I would look at would be the decay and the sustain. So if there's a lot of sustain, it, it may hold too much weight in your mix for too long and you might want to turn that down. And then also the decay, how short do you want those key strikes to sound? Now, if this was like a bell or a mallet, the decay is going to be a little bit less than on a straight up key sound. All right, so here is a bell slash kind of a mallet, it's a kalimba. And you can see that it's a slightly different envelope shape from what we just saw with the more natural or organic sounding key envelope in that we have a very sharp decay, right? Because it's not going to ring out that long. Here's what it sounds like. All right, so this next shape is going to be for plucky sounds. It could be a polyphonic pluck like we have here. Or it could be a plucky bass or even a lead. Now, oftentimes when you're making a pluck sound in a synth, you're going to have to have two envelopes to really get this sound. So if we go to envelope one, it'll actually look more like the key pluck or the key envelope that we were just checking out. I could actually make this look like pretty much anything, and this is still going to sound like a pluck. And that's because with plucks, you often have a filter envelope, an envelope that's modulating the cutoff of the filter. So this envelope here is modulating the cutoff of my filter, and it's a very plucky shape. So it really doesn't matter if you're going to do that two envelope setup to get a synthesized pluck. What that first envelope is, it does help, in my opinion, to have a shorter decay and a shorter sustain, but you don't really need to. It just makes it a little bit more cohesive. Now, the second envelope in this example, this is the plucky envelope. So we can see that we have a fairly short decay time, pretty short attack time. It's as short as you really want. And the release, again, is just dependent on how you want to play it. All right, so now we're going to look at envelopes for lead sounds. Now, leads in my opinion, have the most uh, variance between what you'll see from preset and sound to sound in terms of the envelope shape. So here is a lead with pretty much a stock envelope, just with a little bit more release. Now I'll tap through to another lead, right? Slightly more release, less decay. Right, so it doesn't have just monumental, you know, never ending sustain. So it really does depend on the type of lead. You could probably break it down into some into a few different subcategories. Maybe a lead that's, you know, constantly sustaining is zero to 100, incredibly quick. And then there's maybe ones like this brass sound we just heard that's going to have more decay. And you could even have leads with incredibly short decays like this one. All right, so a thing I've noticed with uh, people I've helped out with producing and sound design, a common thing is that they struggle to find that right sound for their lead. And it usually, they think it's that it's more about they haven't got the sound that they're after. When in reality, wanting a your lead sound to sound like a super saw or a saw or a square is more of a preference thing, right? What, what I have often found is it's they're, they're trying to use a lead sound that doesn't have enough sustain or it has too much release or the decay is wrong for the melody that they're playing in their track. So that's something that I would consider checking out. Like, let's say you load up a sound like something that you just like the sound of, like this one. Right, so this sound has very minimal decay, hardly any sustain. 
So that might not fit your track, so you might move on to the next sound, but this could sonically be a really cool choice for your track, so you would just need to tweak the envelope. Right, and then it could fit what you're playing. All right, so this next envelope shape is going to be one that you can use consistently on pad sounds and uh, ambient sounds. Now, this one here is pretty drastic. This is a pretty crazy looking attack. That's why I wanted to start off with it. But, but generally, the way in which you'd create a pad envelope is you would add some attack time, and you don't generally want a really fast ramp up. You want more of a subtle one, right? So it could look something like that. Uh, there, there's a lot of different things you could do. You may not want much sustain or decay. It really just depends on the sound. So if we go back to our first envelope, this one looks pretty crazy. Let's check it out. So here's another pad preset. It has less of an exaggerated, elongated attack time, but it still has more than you would expect with like a synth or a pluck or a key. Now, just to highlight what it sounds like, if I turn this down, right, I've quickly changed this pad sound into more of a key. All right, so now that we have checked out the common envelope shapes, I'll quickly show you how you can take that knowledge and transform presets from one type to the next. So here is a key patch. So if I wanted to turn this into a pluck, it needs a little less decay and even a little less sustain. So what I'm gonna do is on my amp envelope, turn that down, go to our second envelope, and we will modulate this one into a filter. And now we've quickly turned that key sound into a pluck. Now let's say I wanted to take this same patch and turn it into a pad sound. So let's go to my first envelope, add some attack time, add some sustain. And then let's take this uh, second envelope because that's modulating our filter and we're gonna make a pad shape with that for our filter as well, just so it's not as an abrupt opening. All right, now we have a pad sound. All right, so to finish off this video, I wanna just throw out a couple tips and tricks with envelopes. If you are using like a super saw sound or any sound and it's hitting your CPU oddly hard and just kind of destroying your CPU, it could be an envelope thing actually. So if we initialize our preset, I'll add some voices of unison here. We'll add 11, we'll run this into the filter so it's not too bright and buzzy. If you have a lot of release time and you're playing chords that are like five, six, seven notes and Let's turn the release up on the amp envelope, that would be helpful. And you do something like this. With this long release time and our voices of unison, Serum has to crunch those numbers. It has to, or any synth for that matter, it has to have all those voices kind of playing over themselves as the release decays, right? All right, so another thing that could be helpful for some of you out there who are experiencing pops and clicks, that could be either an attack setting or release setting. So here is a very simple filtered saw with zero milliseconds on attack, zero on release. You'll notice that you'll hear a click or a pop when I let up on the note. And that's because the release is set to zero. So just adding a few milliseconds of release will usually fix that. Same with the attack. Now the attack by default in Serum, that's why it's set to 0.5 milliseconds. You can't really tell that it's not happening almost immediately, but you will not usually run into pops or clicks. Now the last thing I wanna show you in Serum and in a lot of synths that have these visual style envelopes, you can actually curve certain lines or certain sections of the envelope with these kind of secondary nodes or dots here. So this is actually really helpful. So let's say you wanted to make more of like an analog style envelope. Let's say it's like a 
pluck preset and it's just is too digital in your face you want to go more for like a analog vibe you could try turning up the attack so we can see this node in serum and then rounding this and then turning it back down it makes the envelope less sharp kind of less digital because there's more of a it's more of a subtle increase into the max amplitude that at 23 milliseconds versus this at 23 milliseconds. Right, it's just a little bit smoother and it, it will work for certain sounds. And now you can do that with the decay as well, right? So you can curve the decay, which we've touched on a couple times in this video. All right, so that's gonna sum up this video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can post those below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you guys aren't subscribed to our channel, you know the drill. Hit that subscribe button. The support really does mean a lot to us. And if you guys haven't ever checked out our website, echosoundworks.com, definitely head on over there. There's a ton of free content, samples, loops, and presets. And of course, there's some premium sound sets and sample packs as well. And lastly, if you guys use Instagram, consider giving us a follow. We run a lot of contests, giveaways, and promotions on that platform. And I think you guys will like what we're doing over there. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.